What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Mike's Tech Talk. Today for you guys, I got a brief video. Just wanted to show you guys a few of the different ways that you have to get into your phone in 2018. This is really just going to be a real short video detailing the different options that you have when it comes to unlocking your phone. Now what I have here in front of me is I have an iPhone XR, I have a Galaxy Note 9, and I have a OnePlus 6T. So each phone has a different way to access the screen and to access the features of the phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have all of them laid out the way they are, and we'll start with the iPhone XR. Now with iPhone, with the new generation of iPhones from the iPhone X, XS, XR, the latest generation of iPhone, they have what's called tap to wake. So all you do is tap the phone, and they have at the bottom of it, it's called swipe to unlock. So once you swipe to unlock, you're prompted, you see the flash at the top there is for the face ID sensor. So you either can put face ID or you can put your password in. Now, the phone was just recently reset, so you have to put the password in. So I'm gonna put the password in the device. And I'm gonna bring it back to the camera. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to do this from behind the camera, but I'm gonna lock the phone. And I'm gonna show you guys, you tap the screen, wakes the screen up. Now you see that flash and it's for face ID. So I'm gonna look at the phone from behind the screen and you see it unlocked. Now there's no button on the phone or on the back of the phone, like with this phone. So we'll do that one more time. You see the device unlocking. So that's what Face ID is. Really just wanted to show you guys what Face ID is. Just kind of give you a, a little bit of a rundown. Now, I don't really have any apps to show of what Face ID can do, but it's the same thing as Touch ID. All you do is just look at the phone and it's very secure. It's a 3D map of your face. So there's a dot projector system that takes a 3D matrix map of your face. That's what that notch is for at the top of an iPhone. Now this is gonna be the same on the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 10s and 10s Max. So that's the iPhone. Now with the Galaxy Note 9, you get a few different options. You get a fingerprint sensor on the back, you get the pattern unlock in addition to pin unlock, and you get the intelligence scan. Now intelligence scan at the top of the note, this is not a notch by the way, this is just a screen protector. Intelligence scan is a combination of an iris sensor, and a face scanner. Now the face scanner on the Note 9 is not nearly as detailed as the iPhone. It's more of just a picture, which means that it's not as secure as the iPhone. You can't just hold the iPhone in front of somebody's face and get there and, and get them to unlock the phone. It has to be a little bit more detailed. Your eyes have to be open, vice versa. With the Note, it can be tricked with the picture of yourself. So I'm not gonna actually demonstrate that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys. Now when you power up the device, now you see that red dot at the top, that red dot at the top represented the iris scan. Now, you might not be able to read it because of the wallpaper that I got, so I wanted to change the wallpaper on the phone to make it a little bit easier. I had to pause the video for that. So essentially, all you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the power button, and you'll see that red dot, that's the iris scanner, and it's trying to pick up my irises. Now, you'll see it says phone too close to face. Now, as you'll see with the Note, it's a little bit more gimmicky than it is with the iPhone. It's a little bit more flimsy in my opinion but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look at the phone from behind the camera now you see it worked now same wallpaper I'm looking at it from behind the phone now you see the phone at the bottom so you know it's unlocking you can hear it as well I don't know if you guys can hear that we'll do it one more time and then you also have a fingerprint sensor on the back now the beautiful thing about a fingerprint sensor on the back an actual hardware fingerprint sensor is that all you got to do is just put the finger on it unlocks so as you see three fingers and a thumb no buttons, you see it unlocking. So that's what you get when it comes to an actual physical fingerprint sensor and the intelligent scan on the Note 9. And lastly, you have the OnePlus, which OnePlus is the first, this is their first phone that is being carried by a major US carrier. It's being carried by T-Mobile, that's where I picked mine up, and it's also being supported by Verizon this year, but you can only get it at T-Mobile or online on their website. Now, I still think this is one of the best phones for the money, but that's a video for another day. What I wanted to show is that with this phone, you see there's no fingerprint sensor on the back, there's no fingerprint sensor on the front. Now, it has Face ID similar to the Note 9, where it's a picture. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the power button and I'm gonna show you guys how fast it is. Now you see it didn't even take didn't even take two seconds. You can hear it. Now sometimes it doesn't even make it to the lock to the home screen. 
Now, there is also a feature on this one, very similar to the iPhone, which is called tap to wake. So you tap it and you see you have that green motion at the bottom down there and you have that screen. Now, when you tap to wake, it does not do the face unlock. It only gives you the fingerprint option. Now, the fingerprint option on this is what they call an optical image fingerprint scanner. So essentially, what that is, is there's a camera, there's a tiny camera hole in the device that shines out to take a picture of your phone, of your thumbprint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hit the power button, I'm gonna put my finger on there, and you saw that display, tap the weight. Now, this is pretty fast for an optical fingerprint scanner. It's not nearly as fast as this, but really and truly, when you look at them, now I got this thumbprint set up, so what we'll do is we'll do a little test real quick. Let's just see. Now I got this finger back here for that one and I got this one over here. Let's see, in three, two, one. Okay, maybe I didn't hold it down long enough, so we'll, we'll lock both the phones again. We'll do it one more time. Three, two, one. Now see, that one took a while, but the thing about these fingerprint scanners that you have to remember with every device, this was the same thing with Touch ID with the Apple phone, is that it's gonna continue to register the more you use it. I've used this thumb on this fingerprint scanner at least 50 times a day since I've gotten the phone just yesterday. So therefore, it's already learning my fingerprint more. It's already taking more pictures of the fingerprint to really and truly get used to it to the point that it's unlocking as fast as it is. So anyway, just a real quick video of showing you guys what you get with your devices that you may purchase nowadays. A lot of people are griping at Apple for no longer having Face ID or having Touch ID. A lot of people are griping at uh, other Android manufacturers such as OnePlus and uh, you know LG for having notches but not having a fully featured Face ID like this. So it really, you know, your mileage depends on use. Uh, maybe next year Apple will put in-display fingerprint sensors that we now see it can be done. So who knows, but anyway, this has been your man Mike for another edition of Mike's Tech Talk. Make sure you hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and leave me a comment. Let me know which one do you prefer. I personally prefer the Face ID. Uh, it's a lot faster and, you know, no touch. Just look at the phone and get into it. But anyway, peace.